you know, we had a problem with that, and uh, it was pretty much overcome. There may be something like a $1,000 that, that goes over, but uh, pretty much the pool has paid for itself. Uh, I want to look at the second um, slide, uh, and that's the average budget of the senior center. Um, the Monroeville Senior Center is around 429000 uh, that the municipality is uh, funding. Uh, also, those expenses and fundraising, um, that is also uh, <clears throat> put in by senior council. So the, those dashes underneath there, the fundraising is about 6% that senior council works hard on. Their budget expenses run, you know, contribute about 10%. But 75% is really from the municipality. They're, the grants might be for um, funding the bus. Uh, we had uh, Representative Joe Markosik, I think, uh, help fund that through a grant uh, with $80,000 on the buses uh, from the seniors that they have. Um, and I want to go to the next slide here. The, do, both of those departments have they have goals, and of course the Monroeville Senior Center's goals uh, is to continue new, to develop new programs, to continue to develop new services, and to strengthen the financial foundation. And as well, the Parks and Recreation goals um, are to continue to find sponsorships, maybe get more uh, funding for summer concerts, and, and you know, pay more and more of those types of things in the summer, and continue working with the school district. You know, the school district hasn't uh, always had a free agreement, a lot of the district charges the municipality when it has to incur additional expenses and custodians on duty for the buildings that we rent, but to, to continue to work with them and then of course respond to the public's interest because you have to continue to produce programs for the public and you try to throw some new things out there. Uh, the same goes for the senior center. They have similar goals. Um, I want to look at three years now because these are those donut charts that I'm I'm going to show you here. And so the next slide, I'm sorry, I apologize that it wasn't a bigger slide, but I chose three different years, and, and these are the years that this is the funding of the Senior Center. Um, the blue, of course, is in that year, 2005, about 326,000 came, came from uh, the municipality. And the red, of course, was the capital budget. We had $37,000 that had to go into paving the parking lot that year. Um, under the, uh, I think you could see that it's uh, green, uh, was the amount that uh, council budgeted toward expenses. That was 41000 And then the purple uh, is 57000 And of course, that's the senior council fundraising that they did. Um, there's a very tiny slice there that's in light blue. This really isn't part of what that budget was that year. This is the three and a half thousand dollars um, that it cost to try to find a space. Uh, if we could have sought a space for after hours, that's how much it would have cost to rent that uh, for some of the parks and recreations program. That's why I'm including that little slice in there. It's really not part of their budget, but they could have used the space uh, at, for after hours programs. I want to go to the next uh, year that we had a capital budget too. So that would be the next slide. And that slide is from uh, 2009, <clears throat> excuse me, nine. Um, this looks like it's a little bit bigger, and it is. As far as the municipality, we had a $407,000 budget. And of course, there was a capital budget, but you see it's a little smaller in red. That was the year of $25,000 we had to spend for the exercise equipment. And then there was, uh, in the green, um, spending about $54,000 out of the council, senior council's budget expense. And then, then that purple was uh, $75,000 that they uh, did for fundraising that year. Of course, that little slice of blue is about $9,800 that could have been used for space to present leisure programs after hours. Next slide is the last one here um, where you can see this is the year 2011. So there's quite a bit of that blue there. That was the um, municipality that year had to pay $514,000 for running the senior center that year. And of course, um, we did have a capital budget in red there, but that was just $15,000 for the automatic doors that were needed. Of course, fundraising still occurred. That's pretty been pretty consistent, $41,000 for 
or forty thousand dollars for fundraising and forty one thousand dollars for what the senior council did collectively. Uh, and then, then a, a tinier slice up there of blue. That's that was four thousand dollars that we had to spend for rental that could have that they they were sinking space. That space could have been sought there because those are after hour programs, part of the leisure time from the parks and recreation. Um, and uh, so now, and I, I just want to say we can. Uh, our greatest asset, I feel, is our seniors. Some, some woodsmen told me that. Uh, and our most precious resource is our young. Uh, they should be brought together, I feel, for community unity and to help a community thrive. Why would I advocate combining two departments in one? I feel if we envision a plan to serve all of the community, and we can. Uh, we strengthen both parts of that community. The fact is, if you look through your parks and recreation brochure, some of those programs, you couldn't possibly use the Senior Center for basketball, uh, swimming. No, those are things that you have to coordinate. And we have to do a good job of, of coordinating them for some of the things that we do for the school system. But the school system needs money, too. Why do you think they were up in front of us for the uh, use of the middle school? and uh, for rental to a church group that wanted to meet there. They're looking for money, and they're looking to get that money any way they can. We're looking to try to utilize something that's 100% unutilized after the hours of 4 o'clock when the doors are closed. We're not in offering this because I was there listening to the proposal of taking away any of the programs that would have normally occurred. But after that 4 o'clock hour, when you have calligraphy classes, um, Zumba, young Zumba, uh, arts and crafts, things that can be held in buildings that are 100% unutilized. It makes sense that we demonstrate by having full utilization of an unused center. That greatly sustains leisure time. It greatly sustains the quality of life to all age groups, all age groups. Our greatest assets is, you know, seniors and our most precious resources are young. We show that by securing more of its use in the future, this community center would grow stronger by virtue of its productivity and its service. Together, it's a stronger union of services that can't be broken apart in future budgets. And I wanted to make that point about my understanding and my support of the community center. Uh, will it take hard work? Yes. That's why you want a person who is going to be the best person to direct over it. Um, and uh, I heartily think that that is, well, I mentioned that, that I thought Mrs. Grisak was uh, one that could do that. And it takes more than that. It always takes volunteers. Volunteers are something that for the past two years I've been talking about at senior council meetings. Uh, they should welcome more volunteers to sit on that senior council board with them. They should open their, their arms to younger seniors like myself and you, Mayor. We're both the same age. And, um, you know, 50 plus. I'll say 50 plus, Mayor. Yeah, I wish. <laughs> okay. Um, so um, that I hope will be something that uh, if, if there are any questions uh, that people will contact me uh, about that. I will be glad to explain myself to them. I'll be glad to share some of this information with them. And um, I thank you uh, for listening. Um, I've got a couple more pictures. <laughs> and um, this is going to be just to announce something uh, about the Monroeville uh, Food Garden uh, for the year 2013, because we've had our season of growing. And uh, we've added to this year, uh, into the past two years, we've had 1,000 pounds of produce from the past two years. This year, we raised about 375 more pounds. It wasn't as productive. That's because we had a big old tomato blight. Uh, but um, we have um, raised that for a total of 1,376 pounds of produce for assisting local food banks. So those food banks that we have serviced and that I hope to continue to service in perpetuity with volunteers every year include Pit Karen Food Pantry, uh, Monroeville Assembly of God Food Pantry, Garden City Food Pantry, and Crossroads Presbyterian Church Food Pantry. 
Uh, the second little uh, photo here, I just wanted to thank the people who volunteered. There's Sandy. Um, uh, we've had a lot of volunteers come and go, but I wanted to mention how we couldn't do it without them. Here's Sandy McFall. But I also have other people to thank who have been very instrumental. I want to thank Sandy. I want to thank Karen Howell. I want to thank Penny Morris. I want to thank Georgiana Woodhall. And I want to thank Jake Cothern, who has joined us this year and done so much with his wa uh, weed whacker and uh, skills uh, and uh, his enthusiasm uh, as a, I think he's a senior. <laughs> and uh, I want to thank Michelle um, Burroughs. She's new to uh, volunteering this year, and we hope she comes back and joins us next year. Finally, I want to review, I'm, I'm, I'm going to review something that I read, and you may not have if you don't get the Post-Gazette, by Jonathan Silver, who uh, ran an article, uh, a state law that regulates the collection and dissemination of sensitive law enforcement information was violated numerous times in Monroeville. An audit by the Pennsylvania Attorney General's Office has revealed. It was an audit. In a letter dated Tuesday to the Monroeville solicitor and copied to officials, Executive Deputy Attorney General Lawrence M. Cherba noted that his office could have sought court-imposed penalties for violations of the Criminal Histories Record Information Act. Mr. Cherba said his office decided to handle the situation administratively. However, because the violations were first for Monroeville, municipal officials cooperated with the Attorney General's audit and corrective measures were taken. Uh, quote, however, we must caution that should conduct of this sort recur or should policies that led to these violations be reinstituted in the future, uh, we will pursue the more stringent civil and criminal sanctions available, unquote, Mr. Cherber wrote in the letter, which was obtained by the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. Uh, a meeting had been scheduled this last Thursday night between Monroeville officials, Mr. Cherba, and David Peffer, a special agent in charge of the Bureau of Special Investigations, but it was canceled earlier in the week. Following discussions with auditors, quote, everything has been handled, unquote, Joseph C. Peters, a spokesman for the Attorney General's office, said Thursday, quote, there's no need for the meeting, unquote. Said Mayor Gregory Arasinko, um, yeah, I think I cut it off here. Um, I heard that. <laughs> um, my opinion is that I'm glad that this was not made into a political nightmare. Uh, Monroeville remains under federal investigation. That is the HIPAA violations um, for allegations that it breached privacy law with unauthorized releases of information from ambulance calls. That investigation stemmed from a complaint filed by Police Chief Stephen Pascarella in August of 2012 when he was assistant chief. The attorney general's letter noted that there were two other investigations of improper accessing of protected records. Various individuals who were subsequently found to have improperly accessed such records were sub subject to discipline and were terminated from their public employment, the letter said. How many times have to hear municipal manager, municipal manager, uh, Lynette McKinney released the following statement in regard to the investigation. Over the last 10 months, myself, Chief Bascarella, and four members of council have taken relentless public abuse and humiliation, threats, and questions related to our integrity. Because of the nature of the allegations, we were forced to sit quietly. I am pleased that the Attorney General's office recognizes the Monroeville Police Department under Chief Pascarella and my leadership did what was necessary and correct. We cooperated with the investigation. We held those responsible, accountable. And because of the professional manner that this was handled, the municipality of Monroeville will face no sanctions. Personally, quote, personally, this has been one of the most difficult times in my life. However, I'm proud that I and those who stood with me, Chief Pascrella and the majority of council did what was best and necessary to protect the privacy of our residents and our municipality, unquote. The latest situation involves the handling of data collected by Monroeville Police. The 33-year-old criminal history record, 
Information Act sets forth procedures for reporting arrests, fingerprinting, dealing with expungements, and the handling of various information collected by law enforcement. The Attorney General's audit determined the records law was violated when unauthorized individuals, private citizens, and members of the Monroeville Volunteer Fire Department accessed 911 records during a two and a half year period from August 2010 to February 2013. There was, we determined, unauthorized access to emergency medical services, paging, and to computer-aided dispatch records regarding police calls, Mr. Cherba's letter said. Our investigation into this matter also found that in at least one specific incident-related instance, official uh, Monroeville Police Department records were tampered with, altered, removed, or destroyed, although it did not establish the responsible individuals. The findings seem to mirror those of a private investigator, John J. Daly, hired by Monroeville. Mr. Daly blamed former police chief Doug Cole, who was fired. So I'm curious, now that I've read this article, as to why the mayor and some of the council here all accused Mr. Daly of being known by someone uh, as if it was something outside a due process. And if you still feel that way, uh, then how do you explain the, uh, the Attorney General saying the same and referring to the termination of the former police chief? And by the way, this matter, I agree, the HIPAA matter has not yet been addressed by the Office of Civil Rights, but this matter has. And that's the end of my report. Nick. Yes, Mayor. Um, I appreciate the, uh, the pie charts from Mrs. Drumheller. I just want to make sure that some of the numbers that are, people are clear on the numbers between the two departments, between the Rec Department, Parks and Recreation Department and the Senior Citizen Center. Um, I don't have the average of the past several years of the Rec Department. I just have my 2014 budget, which has last year's budget. Um, but we add up all the departments of the Rec Department, which is 4,500, which is their administration, um, leisure learning, 4,700, uh, and the pool, we're actually more at 576,000, which I don't know where the 266,000 comes from that you, uh, well, you mentioned. Yeah, the, the community pool, of course, was, um, since it had pretty much, it's a wash, it pays for itself, it wasn't included on there. Okay, the so we'll say, program was. Okay, so 476,000 if we take $100,000 off for the pool. Um, and you're looking, you're looking at 2000, averages? 2013. I don't have the yeah, average. That, that, that's what I did. I, I, I figured it would be more fair to say average. Okay. So that number is, I mean, you mentioned 266. My calculation from 13 is more like closer to 500,000. And also some things to uh, compare the two departments. Um, the, the senior center has two public works employees that, that are, are there, which comes out of their budget. Um, it doesn't come out of public works budget. It comes out of the senior center budget. So... That's roughly, when it's all said and done, maybe, let's say, $120,000 with health insurance benefits and everything that does not come out of public works. It comes out of the senior center itself. Um, whereas if we look at the rec department in that regard, um, you know, the pool in general, the pool, that $100,000 for the pool, there are public works guys that work down there, get the pool ready. They're there quite a bit for the chemicals and everything. But that money does not come out, does not reflect in the pool. It reflects in public works. Same thing with the parks department. There are, um, there's a parks crew that cuts the grass and takes care of the, the parks. Um, now, certainly, they're only there during the fair weather months, but those salaries don't come out of parks and recreation. They come out of public works. So as we look into this further, I mean, we really need to compare apples to apples um, because we have two public works employees coming out of the rec department. We have a, a large amount of public works employees that do not come out of the rec department, so that will shift the numbers when we start comparing them side by side. Um, and along those lines, um, I just want to thank Senior Council for uh, inviting me to their soup day today, which was a very nice event, well attended. Um, they have a wonderful center over there, and uh, certainly we will. Uh, there will be more discussion. Uh, regarding the, the senior center and the rec department. But as we move forward on this, I think we need to be clear with, um, clear with the numbers so we can really have an accurate uh, description of the two departments and how they operate. So, Certainly. So I mentioned the soup day, and once again, thanks to the um, senior council. 
we have a, uh, a, f a large amount of events coming up for the rec department. Um, Letters to Santa starting Monday, November 25th, running through Tuesday, December 10th. Um, there are drop-off boxes at the library, also drop-off boxes at the, um, at the rec department itself. <coughs> Parents are uh, to make sure that their, their children's names and return addresses are legible um, so Santa can read them. Um, there's been a, a long streak of Santa answering every letter that is uh, placed in the, in the boxes. Um, Monroeville has great uh, services here. Uh, public Works, Rec Department, Senior Center, Library. They also found, found a way to deliver letters to the North Pole um, in an efficient manner, and uh, everything's answered. So please, Letters to Santa's coming up, Library and Rec Department. <laughs> Candy Cane Hunt is December 7th. That's a Saturday. It's at the Community Park West. Cookies, hot chocolate. Uh, you'll meet in Pavilion 1. And uh, please dress warm. All ages, if you want to come. <laughs> oh. Well, it's 1 to 2 p.m., Saturday, December 7th. Um, if you enjoy the Christmas holiday, come out. And holiday light contest is coming up. Residents should turn on their holiday lights on Sunday, December 8th from 6 to 9. A winner will be chosen from each ward, and then a grand prize winner will be chosen um, from those ward winners. And then lastly, the give us your best shot winter photo contest um, runs from the first snowfall of the season which so it begins today um, take photos residents are invited to take photos and submit a winter picture in digital format for the rec department and they will select winners um, between now and March 31st so we have letters of Santa the candy cane hunt holiday light contest and the give us your best shot winter photo contest all this information is available through the rec department um, I'm sure it's on online as well and through TV 15. Um, in regards to, um, I'm happy that council passed the, uh, got the light um, for Monroe Boulevard. That is a very unsafe corridor there. Hopefully the light will help um, with that area. Um, speaking of pedestrian safety, I just wanted to thank um, Dom and his crew, Public Works. We did an upgrade to the uh, Heritage Park crosswalk that crosses over Saunders Station Road. That feeds, um, the park from the neighborhoods of Park Forest, which is Knollwood, Deerfield, Woodcliffe, Foxborough, Hillsdale, Woodland. They all funnel through that walkway. It's a very unsafe uh, area where the dog park is. Um, people go pretty fast down Saunders Station Road. Um, so they did some upgrades over the past uh, several months to upgrade the signage. And we also, um, I want to thank Mr. Sedlak, who uh, got me in contact with someone from PennDOT. And we were able to secure, um, at no cost to the municipality, some uh, yield to pedestrian signs, uh, state law yield to pedestrian signs, which really upgraded that um, crosswalk there at Heritage Park. So I thanked him, thanks to Mr. Sedlak and thanks to Dom and his, uh, the road crew for getting that all, uh, sign crew for getting it all set up and, uh, and upgraded and hopefully that makes that a, a safer crosswalk. And uh, a congratulations to the Duncan family for their addition and their expansion. And lastly, the day after Veterans Day, a, a big thanks to uh, all of our servicemen and women who, uh, uh, have dedicated their time and, and, and their lives to our country. That's all I have for this evening. Okay, I'll try to be quick. I do have a few items, but uh, uh, I purposely saved this one for this evening, and he happens to be here. John Ritter, uh, he ran against me in the uh, general election, and I just wanted to say to you, John, thank you for running such a clean election. You are a gentleman, and... Uh, uh, and I met many of your family members as well, and they seem to be very nice people. So thank you for that. And and, and it was we had a good time at the polls. So, uh, but again, I just, just wanted to make sure publicly I I address that to you. Obviously, the second thing I want to address is uh, as already mentioned. Uh, I'm glad Officer Lukowitz is coming back uh, again. Such a tragic, tragic accident. I will work with um, uh, County Exec Rich Fitzgerald and maybe to see if we can get some sort of painted crosswalk over in that area as well beside the lighting. I don't know if that's appropriate, um, but certainly we will uh, address that. It'll be an engineering issue on that. I also would like to thank uh, Mon uh, Monroeville uh, Visitors Bureau. They are going to pass.
pass in their budget for 2014. They will support the Memorial Day and Fourth of July uh, parade again this year. So thank you to Sean and all your staff there. Um, obviously, there was a lot of stuff going around in regards to this Attorney General's letter. And as you heard, um, Mrs. Drumheller again put out misinformation. If you read the letter, it mentions nothing about Doug Cole. Zero. It mentions nothing. So that is still all out there. And, and again, I, and I am just so sincere when I say this to everybody sitting here and everybody in the audience. I hope to God this next month doesn't continue with the, uh, the political BS, if you will. We need to just get down to the business of our folks. We have a serious budget coming up in 2014. There's a lot of issues on there. I have talked to many of you as residents you are not happy with. One in particular, if you read, what, remember what Mr. Dice said, I have to agree on that merger between uh, Parks and Rec and the Senior Center. I will not. As I stated, will not. So that's a, that's a moot issue in my opinion. Uh, and if I have to veto all the taxes, I will do that as well if that's the only way I can protect that entity. And that's just not the only issue. You have brought to me many issues, and we will get into that as the budget process goes. The other issue is, and I think, Nick, you forgot to mention it in regards to the uh, senior center, uh, $100,000 of that 400, whatever it is, 1,000 plus, goes to retiree salaries. That's right off the top. You take the, what's left of that, and the majority of that pays for the salaries for the three employees that do work there. To operate that actual facility, when you look at that number, it looks huge. But when you actually break it down, we're getting the bang for our buck there. Now, again, everybody in the world supports our parks and recs, certainly. I want all the youth to have every program that we can offer. But more importantly... I think the seniors made it perfectly clear they earned the right to have their own senior center, and I certainly support that. Think about that. Most of them have been in this community 50-plus years, paid their dues, so enough on that. The other issue I want to bring up, oh, and, and it was also mentioned about Mr. Daly and his investigation. Everybody don't know this, and I'm going to bring it out anyway. And, and, and again, ladies and gentlemen, I don't want to deal with this, but when misinformation goes out or not all the information goes out, as your mayor, I am obligated to let you know. Everybody forgets Steve was the administrator on this, but guess on that whole business, starting back from day one to, to current. But more importantly, Mr. Daly and Mr. Pascarella are very good friends, and it was Steve that brought him in. Now, if you don't think there's some issues with that, that's your opinion. I have issues with it. Actually, Mayor, if I could address... Um, uh, I am not... Statement. Will you just please let me finish? Oh, you wanted I to did correct not... incorrectness, so I wanted to correct you in saying that if you want to call Mr. Daly, he was actually closer to Doug Cole than he was Chief Pascarella. So if you wanted to get that clarified, you could call Mr. Daly... And that's what he brought to the table the first day I met him, just so uh, you have that record straight. I, I do have the record straight. Okay, I just wanted to clarify. I, well, that. you can clarify, and don't ever interrupt me. I don't interrupt oh, you. Well, pardon me, I apologize. Uh, uh, you guys give me hell if I open my mouth during any of your reports. I've never given you hell, Mayor, but I wanted to correct the situation that you were saying. I did correct it. They are friends, and we'll leave it alone at that. Mayor, Last but not Mayor, least. Can I ask you, how, do you how, are, how are you aware? I'm just curious, because I've never heard of this, so... Can you we'll get into that at another time. Last but not least. You'll have to wait, Diane. I'm not going to respond to you, and I do not interrupt any of your conversations. Why are you interrupting mine? Last but not, and I again, I apologize to the listening audience once again. I am so sorry. I hope the political stuff stops. Me too. 
I'm going to, uh, this is veto of ordinance number 2599, passed October 8th, 2013. I will read it once again, and every member of council, including the manager, does have a copy of this. I, Mayor Arasinko, veto ordinance number 2599, enacted on October 8th, 2013, which deals with the police collective bargaining agreement. The reason for my veto is that four new council members, now elect, have not had an opportunity to have any say or have any input into the negotiations leading up to this contract. I am certain that the newly elected council, and I'll even though I add one more, and I will be anxious to bargain with the Wage and Policy Committee to arrive at a new police collective bargaining agreement. This should be a priority, and it will be for 2014. Please spread this veto on the minutes of our meeting tonight. Respectably submitted, I as mayor. I move to uh, override the mayor's veto. Second. Discussion? This. Discussion? Yeah, I am the mayor. I was going to say discussion, but thank you. For call for a roll call. Any other discussion? I'm sure. I'm sure there is discussion. Well, open it up. It's your time. Well, I'm more than aware that this motion will fail, but it gives me an opportunity to at least get some facts out. This ordinance is for an extension of the exact same contract. There are many concessions on behalf of the police department, and after a very long negotiation period for the, with, between the negotiating committee representing the municipality and the police bargaining committee, the contract in effect and the extension would meet a zero increase, no raises, for five years total. So I'm not sure how much more can be gained in this respect. Can't get much lower than zero unless I priority as described by the mayor to take to take from the officers. There is a cola. There is a cola which has not gone above 1.5% on the average for the last five years. So don't be misled by this either. 1.5% is next to the lowest increase for the entire municipality. Please, folks. Go ahead, Diane. 1.5% is next to the lowest increase for the entire municipality employees, including all the labor unions, which means five groups. Mm -hmm. Five years and no increase helps keep the budget steady and would help bridge the gap, wage gap, since all the surrounding communities are receiving wage increases anywhere from 2 to 3% yearly. Plum just got 25 as well as Murraysville. Even the city of Pittsburgh, while they were under Act 47, which means they were declared financially distressed and were required to provide a restructuring plan for their debt, had an increase. To have no increase is unheard of, and you can ask our solicitor and any other retired or current police officer that you might be familiar with or friends with. But this was offered to continue to help with the budget issues, but apparently the mayor thinks there can be more. Furthermore, furthermore the council elect will still be able to take part in a a contract negotiating before their term ends. It just would not be their first one. And I want to say all this so that um, everyone will not be misled in any way. Any other comments? I think I just want to reiterate because I think one of the things that was, was brought up was the um, disappointment in not being able to negotiate. That certainly um, isn't the case because uh, not only do you have a balanced budget that was presented in October, a balanced budget with preservation of services uh, but you have an opportunity over the next, I don't know, the extended years, certainly, of this contract to know that you will have zero movement from the base of what you have for that department. And that's an opportunity. That's an opportunity to find ways to try to do things that are, are strategic in the budget, both on the revenue end and the expenditure end. This expenditure won't change. It won't be delayed by long, arduous processes such as we had with clerical and uh, that uh, result in an unknown change and negotiations and arbitrary, or, or arbitrator. Uh, this gives you an opportunity if you are dissatisfied with that zero movement from the baseline of, of what it costs to operate that entire department, um, if you're dissatisfied by that time to, to, to negotiate to enter into negotiations. So there's no loss of that opportunity for this on its next council to do. 
Uh, so I, I, I just think that it's an opportunity, and I don't understand how that would be uh, something that upsets the apple cart that much. Uh, it, should, it should be welcome, because this is a balanced budget that has been presented with preservation of all services. Well, I just feel that since there's one year left on that contract that I'm aware of, and being sitting up here for the last two years has been tough. I got two years left. I'd like to be involved in it because I don't know if I can do it another four years after this next two. And I would wish to see the four new elect be up here and also get involved in it. And at the minute, I can't see doing anything with the police. We're chiefless. And that's how I feel about it. I have a question about COLA. Um, how, when is the, how often is that calculated? Quarterly. Quarterly. So it's really not an annual. It's not, it's not an annual raise. I mean, I forget the figure. What was, what was the figure, Mrs. Allison? Yeah, uh, Sue gave them to us. Um, there hasn't been. They do it at the end of the year. It's done quarterly, but it's done total at the end of the year. Um, it hasn't been above 1.5% for the, for the entire year, yes, in the last five years. Because it's, it's figured out quarterly, which then, obviously, if it's every quarter, so then your next quarter, you're going off a higher salary for that next percentage and so on and so forth. She gave us that, but it hasn't been above that. And then uh, another uh, another reason why I, I'm against um, the contract extension in the middle of an ext uh, of the contract. Um, <coughs> yes, z zeros are are, are great, um, but the, for the long term health of our municipality, I really believe that a two tiered system is what we need to really get into place. Two tiered system meaning meaning that new <coughs> hires are <coughs> coming in at a different rate, different. Uh, uh, benefits or, or a different package, so to speak, as opposed to our current force. So you're not affecting our current force whatsoever. Um, and as these officers retire and we replace them with new hires, we really make a change in the department um, financially uh, for the long term. So that's, that's one of the reasons why I support, um, support the veto of this contract, that if we could negotiate, try to negotiate um, that two-tiered language for the long-term health of the municipality. And I'd like to state, you say that you received some figures from Susan. I haven't received anything from Susan or... No, they were in, they were given to us when we were in our last negotiations, and she did it a whole... A whole um, when you compared. say us... You were, in that, you were in that executive session. Where we received the yeah, well, we, COLA yeah. amounts? There, every department, every um, labor union was on there with, with for the past, I don't know how many years went back, at least went back eight years. I didn't and recall that as we far all as, them. but I was not part of any, nor should This was I the last time they were good. This was the last time. I don't know if it was a public work. Last you say so, I don't recall having that. I can provide that to you again, Councilman Duncan, if you'd like. This is what it looks okay. like. Okay, I would, uh, anything else, Council, because I do want to make a clarification mm -hmm. uh, for the mm -hmm. members of Council as well as everybody sitting here. Voting yes means you will vote to override okay the veto I've just presented this evening. Voting no means you support the veto. And again, I'm just going to just make it very perfectly clear. I do not have a vote on this council. The new council coming in with the current will make those decisions. My only reason for vetoing it this time, and despite of what Mrs. Allison thinks that I want to do, I have n no vote. Uh, and I certainly support our police department, is that we have four new council members coming in in a matter of about seven or eight weeks, maybe less. It is not fair to them to take anything that this current outgoing majority puts forth, in my opinion. They should have a clean slate to look at the new council coming in. So with that, if there's no further comment, Roll call, Sharon, please. Dr. Greesock? No. Mrs. Stromheller? Yes. Mr. Johns? No. <clears throat> Mrs. Allison? Yes. Mr. Duncan? No. Mr. Ramsey? Yes. And I'll break the tie with a no. And a tie, and oh, that's right. I can't really do that. That's yeah. right. All right. Yeah, it's, it, it fails. Okay. Yeah, right, fails. And with that, I will seek a motion to adjourn. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you and good night.